Good morning, kindergartners. Today we're going to read a story called Circus Caps for Sale. And it's the second book in the Caps for Sale series. Remember we read the first one where the monkey stole all of his caps and he couldn't get them back? Well, this is the next story called Circus Caps for Sale. Let's see what happens. So this is the town that he lives in. Circus Caps for Sale. Early one morning, Pezzo the Peddler woke up. He jumped out of bed and began to dress. First, he put on his socks. Next, he put on his clean white shirt. Then, he put on his fine black and white checked trousers. And last, he put on his fancy yellow shoes. Then, the peddler put on his jacket and his lucky cap picked up his wares, and was ready to go to work. His wares are the things that he sell, sells, and remember he sells caps. The peddler walked fast, as fast as he could without upsetting his caps. For you see, the peddler sold caps, only instead of carrying the caps in a bundle on his back, he carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own black and white checked cap, then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very top, a bunch of red caps. As soon as he got to town, he began to call out, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! But the street was strangely quiet. No man stopped the peddler to try on a cap. No woman leaned out of a window to see if they were really good caps. No children ran after the peddler. There weren't any, even any dogs to follow him. But as he came near to the town square, the peddler began to hear the sounds of voices and loud music. Of course, he thought, it must be the county fair. Sure enough, the nearer he got, the clearer he saw that it was indeed a county fair. The Ferris wheel turned, the merry-go-round went round and round, and at the far end of the square, the peddler saw an enormous circus tent. Caps for sale, caps for sale, the peddler began to call. But before he got to saying 50 cents a cap, boom, went a big drum as the circus parade came around the corner. Oh well, sighed the peddler. He is bigger than I. I'll wait until he goes by. Next, a great big bass horn came into view and began to thump. Oom papa, oom papa, oom papa. Oh, well, sighed the peddler again. He is louder than I. I can wait until he goes by. But what came around the corner next was not just a big drum or a loud bass horn, but the whole circus band. The trumpets shrilled, the trombones blared, and the little piccolos went tweedledee-dee. The big cymbals went bong and a tiny triangle went ping. Oh, well, sighed the peddler for the third time. There are so many of them. I'll just have to wait until they go by. The peddler saw the circus riders prance by on their plumed white horses. He saw the fierce lions and tigers and the chattering monkeys in their cages. He saw a truckload of trained seals and dancing dogs go by. Four striped zebras, three longed necked giraffes, two double humped camels, and one huge elephant. It was a wonderful parade. Even the peddler thought so until he met up with Jumbo. Jumbo was the circus elephant in the parade. 
He liked to perform tricks to amuse the crowd. Sometimes he would simply take some peanuts from a child's hand and put them in his mouth. Sometimes he would fill his trunk with water and pretend to give himself a shower. And sometimes he would steal a hat from a man in the crowd, try it on his rider's head, and return it to the stranger. Uh-oh, I can kind of see what's going to happen. We'll see. Naturally, when Jumbo saw the peddler with his pile of caps, he reached for it with his long trunk. In a second, there was a very surprised elephant, a very amused crowd, and a very, very sad peddler. For all the red caps, blue caps, brown caps, and gray caps came flying down in every direction. When the tumblers, the jugglers, and the clowns saw all the caps falling, they thought it was a new trick the big boss added to the parade. So they each caught a cap and went out on with their axe. The clowns clowned in brown caps, the tumblers tumbled in gray caps, and the jugglers did their juggling with the red and blue caps. The crowd roared with laughter. Everybody was delighted, except the peddler. Down the main street and all around the town, the parade marched, with the peddler running after it, calling, My caps! My caps! Please give me back my caps! But nobody paid any attention to him. Nobody even heard his voice. At last, the peddler gave up. He sat down on a bench under a big tree and watched the parade disappear around the corner. When the parade was over, the circus people gathered in the big top to congratulate the big boss on his clever new trick. Thank you, thank you, my friend, said the big boss, but I had nothing to do with it. Then who did, asked the jugglers. Who did, asked the tumblers. Who did, asked the clowns. Jumbo did, said Joe, the elephant rider. And he told the circus about the little peddler. Joe also tried to show how the peddler carried all his caps. But when he got to the first brown cap, all the caps fell down. Then one of the clowns tried to put on the caps. But when he got to the first blue cap, all the caps fell down. Everybody tried. Even one of the jugglers tried, but when he got to the last red cap, all the caps fell down. Aha, said the big boss. Perhaps it is not such an easy trick after all. And if it is not such an easy trick to do, my friends, does it not belong in the circus? Yes, yes, shouted all the circus people. So the big boss sent two tall men to find the little peddler. The peddler was not at all hard to find, for he was still sitting on the bench under the tree, thinking his sad thoughts. Come quickly, said the two tall men. The big boss himself wants to talk to you. So the peddler went. Hello there, said the big boss to the peddler. They tell me you can carry all these caps on your head without ever dropping a single one. Neat trick, I say, if you can do it. Yes, sir, I can, said the peddler. He knelt in front of the caps. First, he put the bunch of brown caps on top of the bunch of gray caps. Then he put the bunch of blue caps on top of the bunch of brown caps. Then on the very top, he put the bunch of red caps. Very carefully, he picked up the whole pile and put it on top of his own black and white checked cap. Then slowly, very slowly, he got up from his knees and began to walk around, calling out, Caps for sale! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! Bravo! Bravo! shouted the big boss. 
Bravo, 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 shouted the rest of the circus people. How would you like to do your act in the circus ring, asked the big boss. Uh, I don't know, stammered Pezzo. I am only a peddler who sells caps. But if you really want me to... Of course we do, said the big boss. There's nobody else like you. That evening when the circus lights went on, the show was really grand. There were horse riders and elephant drivers. There were trained lions and tamed tigers. There were dancing dogs and talking seals. There were tightrope walkers and jugglers and tumblers and clowns. And of course there was the peddler. Every one did their acts very well, but most of all people liked the peddler. They clapped and whistled when they saw how he carried, on top of his own black and white checked cap, the gray caps, the brown caps, the blue caps, and on the very top the red caps, without dropping a single one. The peddler was delighted. He walked around the ring feeling very straight and tall and calling, Caps for sale, caps for sale, fifty cents a cap. After the show, Pezzo the Peddler sold, sold all his gray, brown, blue, and red caps. Someone even wanted to buy his own cap. But the Peddler wouldn't part with it. It was his lucky cap, he said. And besides, it matched his own black and white checked trousers. The end. I hope you enjoyed the story.